Let's start by drawing a line segment. A line segment is a part of a line that has two endpoints. Here, we have points A and B, marking the endpoints of our line segment. Notice how the endpoints define the line segment. Without these, it's just a part of an infinite line. This is a line segment because it has a definite beginning and end. But what if we remove the endpoints? Now, the line extends infinitely in both directions. This is what we call a line. A line has no endpoints and goes on forever. We can zoom in or out, but it never stops. Now, let's look at a ray. A ray has one endpoint and extends infinitely in the other direction. A ray starts at one point and keeps going forever in one direction. When two lines intersect, they meet at a single point. This point of intersection is quite interesting. This point of intersection is where the two lines cross each other. At the intersection, the lines form several angles. Each angle has a specific value. Understanding these angles helps us explore many geometric concepts. Sorry for the interruption. Many of you haven't subscribed to our channel yet. By subscribing, you're not only supporting us, but also helping us keep creating free, high-quality content for you. Let's begin by creating two lines, one horizontal and one vertical, forming a 90-degree angle. This is a right angle, measuring 90 degrees. Now let's rotate a copy of the horizontal line by an angle. An angle, alpha, forms between the original line and the rotated line. Another angle, beta, forms between the rotated line and the vertical line. Together, these angles are complementary, meaning their sum is 90 degrees. Complementary angles always add up to 90 degrees. Now let's rotate the vertical line from 90 to 180 degrees. This forms a 180 degree angle, a straight angle. Let's rotate another line by an angle. Now we have two angles, alpha and beta, formed between the lines. Together, these angles are supplementary, meaning their sum is 180 degrees. Supplementary angles always add up to 180 degrees. Now, let's delve deeper into the types of angles formed when a transversal intersects two lines. Here, we have two lines labeled L and M, and a transversal, T. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines at different points. When a transversal crosses two parallel lines, several angles are formed. Now, let's categorize these angles. First, let's look at the interior angles. These are the angles between the two parallel lines. They include angle 1, angle 5, angle 4, and angle 8. Next, we have the exterior angles, which lie outside the parallel lines. These are angle 3, angle 7, angle 2, and angle 6. Now, let's consider the pairs of corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are those that occupy the same relative position at each intersection. For example, angle 3 and angle 4 are corresponding angles, as are angle 7 and angle 8. Similarly, angle 1 and angle 2, and angle 5 and angle 6, are corresponding angles. Next, we have the pairs of alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are on opposite sides of the transversal and between the parallel lines. These include angle 1 and angle 8, as well as angle 5 and angle 4. Then, we have pairs of alternate exterior angles. These angles are on opposite sides of the transversal and outside the parallel lines. For example, angle 3 and angle 6 and angle 7 and angle 2 are alternate exterior angles. Finally, we have pairs of interior angles on the same side of the transversal. These angles lie between the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. For example, angle 1 and angle 4 as well as angle 5 and angle 8 are pairs of interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Now that we've reviewed these angles, let's highlight some important facts about a transversal line intersecting parallel lines. When a transversal line cuts two parallel lines, the corresponding angles are equal. Can you identify a pair of corresponding angles? Let me know in the comments. 
The alternate interior angles are also equal when a transversal crosses parallel lines. Can you spot the alternate interior angles? Drop your answers in the comments. And finally, the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. What do you think? Can you name these pairs of supplementary angles? Share your thoughts in the comments. These properties are crucial when solving problems involving transversals and angles. Make sure to remember them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.